so we're going to pray our way in and we're going to get active. Man, Father, we thank you. Thank you for this night. Thank you for this opportunity to, uh, to huddle up around your word. Um, your word is like um, the fireplace in the midst of the winter. It is the place where we warm ourselves with, yes. with courage and confidence. We, we, um, we allow the heat of your word to, to burn away um, the weakness of our flesh, the, the sinfulness that is in us. We allow your word to speak to us, to confront us um, and our idols, God, and um, as you come after those, to empty our hands of all that we try to try to grab and hold on to and cling to in this world except for Christ. We then pray that your word comforts us and gives us um, joy and then um, provides what we think those other things will provide so that again, Christ all over again would be our one hope, our one foundation, the center of our joy. And so here we are tonight, God, continuing this thought around um, being about your mission, um, the, ex the other half of um, the work of the church, there is this call to, to come to Christ and rest in what he has provided for us, what he has accomplished for us, um, to, to be comforted by the word of the gospel. But as you, you comfort us, as you heal us, as you um, set us free, you then send us in different ways uh, on assignment that you might um, use our lives. You want to do something in us? And then you desire to do something through us. And so tonight we focus on the gospel push, the gospel mandate um, to go ye therefore. The gospel mandate that tells us freely you have received and freely we ought to give. And so uh, help us to hear tonight and then help our hearts to respond accordingly um, in your word. We thank you um, for all who are here um, tonight. Bless them. Um, give us ears to hear. Give me a mouth to say, God, that Christ will be glorified. Uh, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. So, yeah, this is a kind of maybe week three that we've had a chance to kind of tap on this. Um, I, I hate that it's been a little sporadic with kind of location and all of that. And uh, I've been itching on some of the Wednesdays to kind of get here and then not get all I want to accomplish. But we'll see where the Lord takes us tonight. Um, let's open up. What God kind of put on my heart right now, just opening up with this attitude about mission. This attitude about being those who say, yes, Lord, what do you want from me? I'll do it. You give me the strength, I'll do it. And matter of fact, as I, as I do that, I want to open up with this verse from this song I got called uh, Street Ministry. Right? Um, the verse says this. It says, uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they might. To the pulling down of every stronghold, I got the king of kings inside me. May he drive me with his passion for the loss to see life everlasting. I'm the neighborhood chaplain about that action in the midst of the famine, waging war with the dragon. Shooting scripts from the cannon, preach that word, blow the trumpet of the gospel for those who ain't heard. And it's absurd to only worship in a building and bypass the loss. He wants all of his children. Mm -hmm. So Lord, if you make me willing, then I will go. And speak nothing but the truth and let everybody know. That the king he reigns and his blood stained the cross for the lost vein the same the gang. And so mm -hmm. this is kind of this internal dialogue that I think God has set me forward to, to be fixated on the God of mission, right? The God who has always been moving, right? He says the, the face of the deep God has been moving towards redemptive history. And so Let's look at Christ's attitude. I want to deal with that. Let's go to Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2. Because we know Christ, Savior, Lord, still is the picture of the real Christian, right? He is the only true Christian, right? Like we are following after, we get named after him and caught up in his work as we live with him, but he's the only real Christian. Christ had him crucified, and so he came down fulfilling the mission God has for him, um, had for him while he was in this world. And so look at his attitude at a young age, Luke chapter two, let me get there. Okay, we're going to look at verse number, let's look at verse 49, Luke 2, 49. And so, familiar story, parents 
had, you know, went to the temple of Jerusalem. He's a young guy. And uh, parents, I don't know how they did this. They left. Mm -hmm. And listen to this. Mm -hmm. It was a three-day journey. Like, they, they, they went up a day and found out, where Jesus at? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then the time to get back to him, like, it was like, this was, this was tough. So, <clears throat> But I think it's all for our own record so that we might hear at a young age the passion Jesus had for God's house and God's mission and the wisdom he had where the cats had been in the book for years. He had that. He in there schooling, he in there opening up the scriptures, and they hearing it like they had, like you said earlier today, as they never heard these things before. And so look what it says in verse number 49. I'm going to start 47. And all who heard him, let me back up one more verse. After three days, I'm reading out an Amplified, they found him, uh, came upon him in the court of the temple, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were astonished and overwhelmed and uh, with bewildered wonder at his intelligence and his understanding and his replies. And when they, uh, Mary and Joseph, saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said to him, Child, why have you treated us like this? Here your father and I have been anxiously looking for you, distressed and tormented. And he said to them, How is it that you had to look for me? Did you not see and know that it is necessary as a duty for me to be in my father's house and occupy in my father's business? He said, you know, don't you know who I am? Like, I, I know the angel witness to you. Like, I know you, you know who I am. You know what I came to do. Though everybody else doesn't know it. You, you got inside information. So you know that this, I'm, I'm, I'm already chomping at the bit, if you will, um, to get busy on my mission. Um, and this was the first peeking out of, of the reality of the child Christ recognizing his mission. But just to hear the statement that we want to pick up on, his attitude is, I've got to be about my father's business. I've got to be about his business. I'm not down here for other reasons, right? I'm not down here. Even listen to this. Mom and daddy just to enjoy you. <laughs> like this ain't even the summary of my whole life is to be your child and family kind of. That's not my main focus. There's a call in my life outside of the natural responsibilities. I can't shrink away from them. I'm still a husband. I'm still a father. I got to work. But my main duty must be to fulfill the charge God has laid on my life to bear witness to the glory of Christ through the preaching of the gospel. So that's Jesus' attitude. I am down here on assignment and I must be about my father's business. And so the prayer has to be, let that kick up in me. Jesus, let your spirit, your attitude about the things of God, how you model that, let that rise up in me. I can't, that's not a, um, a four step. I can, for, I can try to force it in the flesh and I'll be all over the place doing everything but what I really should do. I need to get quiet with God and pray for the burn of God in my soul as I meditate upon his word, as I see Jesus. Listen to the, there's a passage about Jesus that said um, he came into a certain area and he saw them as sheep without a shepherd. His heart was broken. Now he got the cure for everything. Like he could fix whatever. But for him to see people in the lost condition, it still ate him up. He looked at them with pity. He looked at them with concern and passion. Um, and we got to pray for those type of eyes uh, to see people. Man, again, today, I'm, I'm, I went and hit my spot again over on the little spot on the little island, man. And, you know, it was beautiful to see some folks who... It's good to see me again. Like, hey, you back out of here, blah, blah, blah. Some new folks I hadn't seen. But just to go amongst God's people with a burden for them and to genuinely love on them um, for Christ's sake, man. Um, there's something we'll get to later. Like, that's that's the foundation of our joy, right? Like, to do what you've been called to do right. is where your joy lies. Right. Right. To, 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 to be given an assignment, as you talked, Coach, earlier, like, do what you're supposed to be doing, right? Like, let's, have, let's, let's play. Let's want to win. That's our attitude. Let's want the best to happen when we're out here. Let's obey the coach. 
And let's enjoy the process in the middle of it, man. That's God's gift back to us. Is to give us joy in the midst of our service to him that will be, listen to this, turbulent. Mm -hmm. It will be rocky. It will be shaky. It will be uh, nerve-wracking at moments. But God will, will do something inwardly to give us a joy that overcomes the moments that we face. And so Jesus had a particular attitude. Let's pick up a little bit more on that. Go to uh, John chapter 4. John chapter 4. John chapter 4, verse 34 is what I want to focus on. Let's see. Let's John 4, 34. So, you mind reading that for us once you get there? I got the amplifiers so I want to spread around. So, I'm read. Yeah, so John 4, 34. You can read yours in one second. I'll just go ahead and read this one. Jesus said to them, my food, my nourishment is to do the will, the pleasure of him who sent me and to accomplish and completely finish his work. <laughs> he said, one, this is my attitude and this is my source of satisfaction to be about what God sent me to do, what my assignment is. And I love the way the Amplifier opens that up. He says, um, who sent me to accomplish and completely finish his work. <clears throat> that's um, that's the only way to go home. Remember, Jesus said in his high priestly prayer, he said, I have finished the work that you gave me to do. He, 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 was, ready to, he was ready to check out after that, like, man, I, I've done what needed to be done. There was a season when Paul was preparing to leave to say, I'm going to head to Spain now because I finished doing what I could do over here. I preached the gospel to everybody. And listen, he hadn't preached to every person per se, but he had planted a flag post of the gospel in enough of an area that nobody had ever heard the gospel to where he was content that that gospel would bear fruit. Let me go to another place that they never heard. Like he was saying, I got to stay on the move. I'm going to let the other pastors, the people who've been fellowshipping around here, gather the church, lead the church, but I've got a job to do. And he can see that's another clear thing to be clear on what your job is. He could have said, oh, i got to stay here. i got to be the pastor now. i got to take care. He's like, no, no, no. Let me train up. I know what my assignment is. Let me get busy in my land and do what God has called me to do. So Jesus says, my meat, my source of satisfaction is to do. And listen to how he talked about it. Not just do it and kind of mm. haphazard. No, I want to completely finish. Which means he had an eye to detail. He, he had, he had, you know, he didn't walk by anybody that he was supposed to engage, right? Like that's what he told that kids. I'm supposed to come to your house today. Come on, that. He had his eye on his assignment. He was clear for the moments that rose up, so that he could fully engage um, the people that he was assigned to um, cross paths with. So Jesus had an attitude. We see him saying. I got to be about my father's business. He's saying being about my father's business is the source of my satisfaction. Now look at uh, John 6 right quick. John 6. Same book. John 6. Let's look at verse number 38. Somebody would mind reading that once you get there. John chapter 6 verse 38. For I have come down from heaven not to do my will but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose none of those he has given me, but should raise them up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up on the last day. So one, he's clear about his assignment, and he's clear that doing what he wants to do is not part of his assignment. He said, I came down at 38, listen to this, from heaven, not to do my own will. I didn't come down here, listen to this, to get caught up. To come down here into this world and let the world get me caught up 
and all of the fantasies, fantasies and false illusions that it presents. Because remember, that was his whole beginning of his ministry was to have the world offered to him. He was like, uh -uh. listen, his, his mind, and so with it, listen, that is <clears throat> presumptuous for me to say, I'm going to just be like that. No, I want that. Help me, Lord. Right. Give me that. Burden my heart so much about your thing that you know, you know, I'm I'm too weighted down with the burden of Christ to let my soul run over here. Like I'm just too the glory is too heavy on me, man, in this direction to let me go over there. That's how some stuff um, stay in motion. It's like certain things, and I don't even know the right things to say, but it's just certain things that got magnets on it that's heavy enough that make things work. Without going off track, because the magnet is heavy enough to keep it locked in on this track. That's how Bart trains and certain stuff run, because the magnet has, the magnet is light. That thing will be wobbling all over the place. But because there's a heaviness on it, it keeps that. So we got to pray for the happiness, man. That the gospel would burden us. Listen to this. With, 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 with the... With the lostness of souls. Mm -hmm. I will see people in their true condition. And I know that the clock is ticking. And I know that God has a people. There's a successful journey that I'm embarking on. Like everybody that God intends to save. He will save. So it's like almost like. Man this all systems go. Houston we got lift off baby. Let's go. There's nothing that will be. That's on God's agenda. That will not be accomplished. If we just set out. And let God lead us. So here Jesus is saying, man, I didn't come down and do my thing. I came down to do his thing. And so we got to spend time enough in his presence so that I can get what my thing is. I can be burdened for my thing. Because I can look at a lot of people doing things. But I said, oh, I can try that. I try that. And I still waste some time. What is my thing? That's what Paul said. He said, all right, what will you have me to do? I'm not asking for Peter, John, none of them. Like, and this is this part of Paul's job created a little bit of conflict for him to stay in his lane. He had to be certain about what he was called to us. He could have got swallowed up because I'm a Jew. I could easily just stay with my people, but I've been I've been told I'm going over here to preach to them. So I'm gonna let y'all have that and encourage you. I'm not fighting for a spot in that, trying to get my name known. I'm like, y'all take that, brother, because I got an assignment over here. And I'm going to be about the Father's business. So Jesus had an attitude. So here we see now three things. I must be about my Father's business. And then he tells us in the one that we read um, after that, he says that my meat, my source of satisfaction is to do his will. And now here we're hearing him say, um, like, I didn't come to do my own thing. I came to do his thing. Let's look at one more on Jesus. Go John 9. <clears throat> John 9, to the verse number 4. Jesus entering the space of a blind man, man born blind, finna change his situation. And here's what Jesus said the urgency of the matter. Somebody would mind reading verse 4 for us. Uh, while it is daytime, we must continue doing the work of the one who sent me. The night is coming, and no one can work at night. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Now that's big. Check this out. <clears throat> He's teaching his disciples. He's including them. Listen to this. In his work. He said, listen to verse 4. We must work the works of him who sent me and be busy with his business while it is daylight. Nighttime is coming. And when nighttime comes, no man can work. So Jesus, he is modeling. He is giving them the, the cadence for life that when I leave off the scene, stay busy. Well, what the Father, listen to this, sent me to do. Y'all see what I'm doing? I'm preaching. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the folks that, that religion passes over, right? I'm going to the people that nobody will go to. And I am actually doing the work of presenting myself to them. That's how Jesus preached the gospel. He came to them. He is the gospel. He is the good news. He came to the people and met them where they were. And so Jesus talked about an urgency. We must work the works of him who sent me and be busy with his business while it's still daytime. So we have to understand that there is an urgency to our work, our, our sense of mission. Even if it's not the end of the world, my time is going to be <laughs> The clock is ticking on me. It may not be the end for everybody, 
but I got an assignment to accomplish, and so I got to be busy about my task doing what God has called me to do. Let's look at one more. Let's get Apostle Paul, man, as he talks about this reality. Go on um, 2 Corinthians 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So here he's dealing with this reality of, of death, putting off the earthly tabernacle, this earthly tent, being clothed with his, the body from on high. Um, <clears throat> he's dealing with all of that. I'm going to pick up in verse number 10. And he declares that, you know, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And he said, whether we are absent from here or, you know, we, we with him, he said, man, my goal is I want to I wanna be pleasing to him. All right, so him was his goal. Christ is my goal. I, I got my eyes on the fact that Christ got his eyes on me, right? He is paying attention to my life, and so I want to be found pleasing in his sight. And he says in verse number 10, we must all appear and be revealed as we are before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one may receive his pay according to what he has done in the body, whether good or evil, Considering what his purpose and motive have been and what he has achieved, been busy with, and given himself and his attention to accomplish. That's big. God is going to pay attention and have a conversation with us on not just, you know, <clears throat> what we did, but how we did it. What was what was our motives behind what we was doing? When I got to get to the root of the matter, the intent of the heart. Just re-listen to this in the Amplified. He said, we must all appear and be revealed as we truly are before the judgment seat mm -hmm. of Christ. So that each one of us may receive his pay according to what he has done in his body. So just think about that. What I've done with my time what I've done with my gifts, what I've done with what God let me see with these eyes. You saw the people hurt. You saw the people struggling. You saw that they was lost. You saw that nobody was going to preach the true gospel to them. What did you do when you saw that? Well, what rose up in you when you got all this joy, all this certainty, all this assurance, and you see that, and you're going to let them talk to them? You're going to let the cat who all about money keep doing all the talking? Mm -hmm. Or are you going to be burdened for those That's folks right. who are being oppressed by religion and you know the truth if you don't go throw yourself up in there? We talked about a while back about this idea of mission of being the guy <clears throat> back in the movies when they did the cannonball. You know, they would you know, show stuff with a guy get in a cannonball and like get shot like, That's the picture of a missionary. Shoot me over there, Jesus. Uh, right, <laughs> Boom! Right, right. And let me, let me run into some stuff. Mm -hmm. And listen to this. Run back to the cannon and say, shoot me again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> shoot me in that down there. Like, that is yeah. the attitude. And that is to be caught up in that with the same kind of joy. And I remember that's how I was when we used to do. Uh, we used to, my cousin used to play uh, football uh, in the bed, right? On the bed. And really what it was was. Diving over the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One person on the bed. Yeah. Somebody got to dive over. And, so, and you, you, you just keep running back and forth. Like it's just all night. You just keep flipping over, getting flipped over. <laughs> like, oh, but it was just, and listen to this. It was fun. Mm -hmm. And we continue to line back up to keep doing it. And so that, <clears throat> that's what I think about, brother, when we hit these streets. It's like, Man, you consistently out there Tuesday, Thursday. I'm finding my Wednesday spot. We hitting every Friday. We can hit. It's like shoot us again. <laughs> shoot us from this street, Lord. <laughs> Here we go. To give ourselves away. Listen to this. And not be in control of nothing. I don't know who we're going to talk to. I don't know if they're going to receive it. They're going to hate it. That ain't my business. Right. The right. joy is being found doing what we've been called to do. And God does something, listen to this, supernaturally in our souls for us. Amen. To let us know, do it, son. Amen. Right where I told you to stay. Like that is thrilling and it is freedom. I don't have to try to do a whole lot of stuff to convince. That ain't my role. Like the spirit is going to work with the word. I'm going to pray God use me. But that is the great place to be. And so he said that we all going to have to give an account for what we've done in this body. Look at how he closes it. Whether good or evil. Considering. This is how you're going to determine good or evil. Considering what his purpose 
and motives have been and what he has achieved, been busy with, and given himself and his attention to accomplish. <laughs> like man, to, to have found out, all right, God, I'm clear for this season of my life, I know what my mission is. And then to begin to see stuff start lining up, like, okay, we got this new logo, man. We got, we got the website. We got street corners. Like, we got somewhat, uh, uh, like, we've, we've entered these spaces to where when you show up, I'm sure cats know. <laughs> he be out here all the time. Like, oh, you, you back. Like, like, God has given us territory and to be known for doing what God has called you to do is a witness in and of itself. Amen. So we have to ask ourselves, what are we busy giving ourselves and our attention to accomplish? He goes on and says this, therefore, <clears throat> being conscious, well, let me let somebody else read it in your verse because there's so many words we'll, we'll, we'll tap on this later, but verse number 11 of 2 Corinthians 5. Um, we know what it means to fear the Lord. So we try to help people accept the truth. God knows what we really are, and I hope that in your hearts you know us too. Now that's big. As a sense of freedom, God knows who I am. He knows why I'm out here. He knows why I'm talking stern if I'm talking stern. He knows why I'm talking happy if they, you know what I'm saying? Like he, like he is in control of the of the of the internal what's coming out of me, the combustion coming out of my soul. Like God knows this is this is this ain't for play. God knows this is the sincere motive of my heart only because he put it there. I wouldn't be out here doing this if he didn't uh, put that heavy on me to where I had nowhere else to go. My life has cornered me in to be like, brother, that's your calling right there, man. And look at what it says. It says, um, I'm going to just read it in this one a little bit. Therefore, being conscious of fearing the Lord with respect and reverence, we seek to win people over to persuade them. But what sort of persons we are is plainly recognized. So listen to this. My persuasive movement is really for your soul's benefit, not for my reputation's benefit. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not trying to persuade you so you can think something special about me. My whole thing is, but I know what it means to fear the Lord. That's right. And I really know what it means to be acting like the Lord ain't nothing. Right. <laughs> to be moving on with life like he don't matter, do what you want to do. Ain't nobody paying attention. There's no judgment happening after this. Like he said, man, I understand what it means to be in proper relationship to where the Lord is now everything and I am subject to him and I see people walking around like they don't know that. <laughs> he said, man, I'm doing this so that you can get a, get, a, get brought to the truth and I think that's what yours said. Can I reread yours in 11 right quick? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. We know what it means to fear the Lord, so we try to help people accept the truth. God knows what we really are, and I hope that in your heart you know us too. That's big. That's how he said, we, we, we work hard. Did they say work hard? What did he say? Uh, we seek to persuade people uh -huh. to the truth. And we read George one more time. Uh -huh. We that? know what it means to fear the Lord, so we try to help people accept the truth. That right there. We are trying to help people. Receive the truth. So that's that's what there are moments in preaching you can see they're not hearing me. Mm -hmm. and, and so 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 in your mind mm -hmm. you, you move to another example. Mm -hmm. You press in a little. I'm like I'm actually now talking to a spirit. I'm, I'm talking to a, a body language response. Uh, I remember one day we was out there and um, it was a cat. Remember that dude that was staring over there <laughs> like this. Like, I don't believe nothing y'all talk about. And the song I was doing was, Do You Believe? Mm -hmm. So I said, well, since you're looking at me, I'm going to look at I read the whole verse to him until he did this. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I was rapping to a spirit. Yeah. Last week, the, 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 the homeless, or not homeless guy, but the guy who, his, uh, the uh, Hebrew Israelite guy, you know, he, he, he created confusion. And you didn't even pay no attention, but you were paying attention to him. And so you were preaching the gospel to everybody, but you were preaching for sure to him. What a conviction about what the true things are we should be focusing on. Not these sideline issues. Jesus is a black man. That ain't the issue, brother. Right, 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 right. <laughs> but again, so it's it's we're preaching to 
to spirits who are captive to the enemy, who are blind to the glory of God. And so that's the Holy Spirit giving us eyes. We're like, no, go get him. You, you're preaching to him right now. Everybody, everybody else walking by, you lose consciousness of. They still listening, but I'm preaching to a spirit right now. Not even the person, the spirit that got you in this blindness. I got to talk to that right now. That 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 is the sharpness. Because really what that is, is God turning himself loose. <laughs> Showing up either to, to break that or to let it be a memory for judgment later on. <laughs> That he confronted that spirit. And so, so we got to be, and so that's why it's so important that we avail ourselves to just go. We didn't know that was going to happen. We didn't know God had an appointment set up where he wanted to confront some stuff. But us just being willing to go and, and, and stand for him and allow him to then use us, then God is able to, and he's able without us, but he wants to work with us. To, to do what he wants to do. Mm. Listen to this. Out of our lives. Amen. He used your eyes to see it. Mm. Oh, this brother tripping. Mm. Let me. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's God at work, man. Yeah. That's, that is his. Listen, that's his heart rising up in us. That's him standing up in us like, uh-uh. Mm. We ain't finna take that. So God has to give us that yeah. spirit so that we can understand that. So let's pick up in verse number 12. We're not trying to prove ourselves to you again, mm -hmm. but we are telling you about ourselves. We are giving you reasons to be proud of us. Then you will have an answer for those who are proud about what can be seen. Mm -hmm. They don't care about what is in a person's heart. Mm -hmm. Wow. We are crazy. It is for God. <laughs> if we have our right mind, it is for mm -hmm. God. Stop for one second. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's big. Mm -hmm. That's big. Look, look what it says in the Amplified 13. For if we are beside ourselves, mm -hmm. mad, as some say, it is for God, right? And so I've used this idea before of if you think I'm doing too much, blame it on God. Because what I've done is I found out he did so much for me. How dare I turn turn the volume down and go light? How dare I tiptoe through the hole? Yes, sir. Right. But I know he went yes, through the hole and put and knock stuff down. Like, I, come on, man, run through the hole. You're going to run through the hole like you Come up and hit, brother. Don't come up. Tap it. <laughs> go do it. So, God, that's what the attitude he said. Again, that's Christ Amen. rising up in us, man, to make us go forward without fear, without compromise, knowing that he is with us and his word has power. We don't have power. His word has power. His truth has power. His eternal decrees have power. And so we run in light of those things, knowing that he's going to set somebody free. Somebody going to get saved. Somebody going to hear this gospel. This ain't a bump run. We ain't going out here for nothing. We haven't started this work for not. It is God got some people in mind, which is why he said, you stop all that, come from over there, and get over here. You, we got low, drop that. Time is over for that and get on over here. And here we find ourselves doing what we didn't come up with this. It just rolls in us to be like, all right, that thing started getting clearer. So that's God's work. He says, so if you think we crazy, man, blame that on God. But if you judge that we in our right mind and we're speaking the truth, that's because God is talking to you. God sent us here, man. God sent us here. Like, there's been some moments, man, that we've seen folks from across the street, be arrested, <laughs> looking, just listening. And again, that's that's God saying, I, I, they had no idea they was going to run into Jesus that day, that moment, to hear what they heard. I remember the one sister a couple weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago, she was across the street listening. And she just, I mean, you know, she was going to keep on going. She was at the light for the keep walking, but she listening. She came on across the street, just stood there for about 30 minutes. I finished rapping, he preached the whole message, <laughs> and she just standing there with this look of, and she came back. Yeah, I can't believe mm. this is happening right here on the street corner. All this goodness that's, listen to this, all, that I, all I know is it was feeding her soul. Mm. She, and she was a believer, and she was just like, this is really happening right now. Mm. But just think about that in that moment of worship in her soul, that moment of thanksgiving, uh, that moment of deeper revelation of the God she has been called to walk with, when he would send folks to be about his business, yeah. that was strength for her. 
And we have no idea what kind of strength. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I could just get the sense something is happening in her right now. Because <laughs> she was over there and I, I caught her eyes. And I, I, and I was kind of like, it's happening, sis. <laughs> yes, we really doing this. <laughs> and she walked on over there. And so again, man, to be doing the thing you've been assigned to do, there's joy for you, but you have no idea who else that was assigned for, man, because God is pouring out. Again, it's stuff that if you tell me to say it again, I can't even say it again. It's in the moment, man. It's the Holy Ghost just saying, all right, I got a willing vessel. Let me go to work, and I'm going to use the stuff I done tucked off in your mind. You, you ain't thought about that scripture in three months. All of a sudden, that scripture rise up with such a clarity because I'm trying to talk to her who need to hear about that situation. That is, the, again, we. that's why he said, man, don't even plan it out all the time. Just go to the Holy Ghost. Go give it to you, man. That's a confidence in God, man, to be on that mission. And so let's, I just want to leave that. I want to leave that. So we, we get the sense that <clears throat> He is urgently about his mission. He recognizes time is winding up, not just for people, but even himself. So he is fixated on doing what he had been called to do. Now, let's get one more thing on Paul. Go to Romans. Romans 1. Got about 10, 12 minutes or so. Romans chapter 1. <clears throat> We're going to go verse 14 through 16. Somebody wouldn't mind reading that for us, please. I am obligated both to Greeks and barbarians, both to the wise and the foolish. So I am eager to preach the good news to you also who are in Rome. Let's stop for one second. I'm obligated and I'm eager. <laughs> Most times when you got an obligation, it's a duty that's a begrudging. He said, man, I'm obligated, I'm mandated, I'm burdened, I'm, I can't shake this call, and I can't wait to do it. <laughs> I'm looking forward to doing it. I don't even know how it's going to turn out. I don't know if they're going to hate me, if they're going to stone me, if they're going to run me out. I don't even know what's going to happen, but I can't wait to get it. To Listen to this. To have the, the opportunity to stand up and proclaim the truth of God's word to a folks who ain't never heard it like this. They, they heard about Jesus. They heard about what you got to do to get yourself right, what you got to stop doing, what you got to keep on doing, what you, how much money you ain't heard, all kind of stuff that ain't the stuff they need to be hearing. I can't wait to let this loose on and see who the Holy Spirit start Amen. grabbing a hold of, <laughs> who the Holy Spirit arrests and awakens and brings into a knowledge of the truth, allowing them to escape the snare of the devil. That, that, that's my greatest joy right now to see Amen. people get it. <laughs> To see people start waking up like, man, the gospel, man. And they, when we know people, because, you know, gospel can be easily a word that just slip in and slide right on out. Mm -hmm. With no real meaning, they talking gospel, but they don't mean gospel. Mm -hmm. They're not like gospel. Like, mm -hmm. I've got, there's a register in me about that. Like, I'm stuck on that. Mm -hmm. Like, that, that, that is, only God does that, man. Uh, in this great sea of religion, in so many terms and words, you can get fixated on and all kind of stuff, but to have your heart stop Amen. on the gospel, Amen. that's God's doing, man. Amen. <laughs> to be wise, I to get what Paul had. He said, man, the only thing I wanted to talk about when I got to among y'all was Christ Amen. and him crucified. Amen. I said one of my songs, I said, um, now I know that y'all be thinking, I know that y'all think that I sound like a broken wreck, <laughs> but I can't believe that I've been received, that I've been accepted. Like I still can't, I'm still stuck. Oh, that that's what you talked last week, the thrilling of our soul. I'm still amazed that he saved me. Amen. And he looked beyond my faults, saw Amen. my great need, had decided outside of me to save me, and that I'm still in the race. Yeah. I'm talking about after I got saved That's and right. I shrunk back and That's ran right. away and tried to go do and he called me right back That's and said right. get back in your spot <laughs> as if I never did anything as if I didn't miss a beat I got scars from the lessons he taught but my soul feel like that didn't even happen I'm so far away from where I was and what I tried to go run to 
Listen to this. Through a transition of my soul, he brought me back to where I feel. He threw that into the sea of forgiveness. Forget about it. Amen. Get back to work. <laughs> Power to go Amen. like as if, as if, if you would have saw what I was just doing, you wouldn't even listen to what I'm talking about. <laughs> I have no right to be telling you this with conviction and power like this is the truth because I wasn't even acting like it myself. But that's why I preach Christ and not my religion. He is good. <laughs> and he will forgive you. I told him tonight. I said he's the God of not just the second, but the third, the fiftieth, the thousand chance. Listen, his mercies are brand new every day. And I need those mercies. I need him Amen. to not give me what I deserve, Amen. but to give me what Christ deserves. Amen. <laughs> Acceptance, Amen. love. He said, this is my son and whom I'm well pleased. Mm -hmm. He's treating me in that same sense because I stand in his son and I'm accepted through his son. So here's this idea of I'm obligated and I'm equal. <laughs> Oh, let that combination happen in my heart. <laughs> to not be able to shake the responsibility, but to have a joy to go do it, that's the gift of God. Talk about a man finding joy in his labor. That's, that's from the Lord. Mm -hmm. That if this is my labor, if this is my life's work, and for you to give me joy in doing it, and I'll be like, man, I gotta get a man going down to our okay, all right, Lord, I'm gonna go do it. And that, that that's... Mm. That's a bird. Like, to have to preach life without no joy. Right, right. To have to preach, to have to preach that which gives joy, which thrills the soul, and you preach that without that. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's a that's a heavy rock. Yes, that's a heavy rock. To to. Yes, it don't even look right. Your facial expressions don't even match up to what you're talking about. Mm. But when God gives a man joy and freedom to oh. do what he's been, listen to this, demanded to do. Man, that's the gift of God. You in the place you're supposed to be. So, so, so let's let, let, let's finish um, getting that. So, just start back over for me, um, brother. Has uh, fourteen through sixteen. God, and we wrong is one. Fourteen through sixteen. I am obligated both to Greeks and barbarians, both to wise and the foolish. So I am eager to preach the good news to you also who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is God's power for salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew and also to the Greek. Let's just stop for one second. Would you hear this in the Amplified right quick? This is ridiculous. <laughs> Listen to this about verse 14. Both to Greeks and to barbarians, to the culture and to the uncultured, both to the wise and to the foolish, I have an obligation to discharge and a duty to, to perform and a debt to pay. <laughs> he said, I have an obligation to discharge. Again, discharge is like, I got some rounds. I got to shoot them. I can't hold these bullets in me, man. I got to discharge my weapon, man. I got to, <laughs> I got to let this out of me, man. He said, I got a, an obligation to discharge. Then he says, I have a duty to perform and a debt to pay. So he's basically saying, I owe you. Mm -hmm. I, I, oh, I've been given some stuff that belongs to you. How dare I take the stuff and go sit down somewhere and hold the stuff that belongs to you? Remember, we read a couple weeks ago when he told Joshua, you will cause them to get the inheritance that I promised to give. Like you gonna be the means I'm gonna you're gonna be the tool I will use so that they get what I promised I was gonna give them. Amen. So you have to surrender. Like a tool ain't supposed to move in the person's hand. The tool supposed to just be a tool. All right. I'm all yours. Put me in there how you want to put me in there. Like do like do whatever you want to do with me because I am your vessel so that you can use me how you see fit to get the job done. So he said I got I'm one more time. An obligation to discharge, a duty to perform, and a debt to pay. Wow. So that's an attitude that we got to have. That's an attitude that woke him up. This thing, if you think about that statement and his life, that match, that cat, I'm, I'm on the next boat, I'm out. 
I, the boat got shipwrecked when I'm over here preaching. They whooped me out of the city. I'm headed to the next city. Yeah, he acted like it. He had an obligation. He had a duty. And he had a debt. It was not talk. He was like, no, my life has been given over to ensuring that people hear the declaration of the same gospel that I try to prevent people from hearing. I found out it's true. And I can't keep quiet now. I gotta let I gotta God gotta tell it on the mountain. So there's an attitude that those who would seek to fulfill the will of God for their lives that must rise up, that we must pray for a conviction. And here's why we need that to happen. Let's look at um let's go Luke 14. Luke 14. I'm going to get a couple more. Luke 14. I kind of want to just paraphrase this. And I'm going to send this to John 20. So this is basically when Jesus has sent out a disciple. He's talking about the parable of, you know, let my house be full. And he's calling people to be about the assignment. Um, what I was going to focus on is in verse 22, and it says, And the servant returned and says, Sir, what you have commanded me to do has been done, yet there is more room. Then the master said to his servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges, and urge, listen to this, and constrain them to yield and come in, so that my house may be filled. What does that mean? Because to, to, to have a sense, you go constrain them. To come. What do you think Jesus means by that? Well, we need to have the power of the Spirit I'm along with the truth. That's been something that's been heavy on my heart. Amen. Because we've got accuracy, but we need God to take those words and you know, put them into the heart so we we pray yeah. or we look to Christ. Amen. And we can't just ask the Spirit on our call. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If if I need him yeah. but to do what he's told me to do in the fullness of it, and then I'm his servant, you know, 24 7. Right. And so it's a relationship yeah. there. And yeah. I can call upon him as I'm preaching or Amen. as I'm witnessing Amen. or as I'm hugging somebody. Amen. Lord. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a constant flow. Amen. I'm living in the spirit. I'm walking yes, in union and communion to where I'm not begging in the moment. Help me. This is what we, we've been talking about this all day. Mm -hmm. I'm just happy to be in front of somebody now. We've been talking about, I've been, I've been pleading with you about using me and making me sensitive to and spending time with and thanking and like I'm so full, everything becomes the overflow. As we talked earlier, it just comes out. <laughs> it's, just, it, it's already gushing. It's like the volcano is already at eruption. It's, I'm full, man. Yeah. And so I, I, I might say any, I might talk for two hours just because yeah. there's so much in me right now. Like, man, I'm a, I'm a vessel that is ready because I have gorged on God, That's right? Right. right? I got a lot of God in me right yeah. now. I'm, 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 man, I'm feeling good right now. Yeah. I got enough to share. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so it's yeah. that praying, yeah. it's that constraining is really making yourself available so that you can be, um, a sharp vessel, right? Like a, a vessel to where it make it person from across the street. Mm. Be like, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> what is happening right now? Mm -hmm. I was minding my business. I didn't expect to come out of the right aid and hear that. I gotta come over here, man. Like God is in so it's 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 that man that we gotta pray for because God wants to do it. He wants to do it. Like, it's not, it's no lack on his part. He's willing. <laughs> He's willing. It's us making ourselves available, as you said, brother, 24 7. Walking in the spirit, fighting against the lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. I hate those moments when I rob myself, right? When I go in areas where, I, man, I know I shouldn't have went over in this area, and I feel the weakness. I got concerns in my mind right now. Like, all of that. Like, man, stay from over there with all that, man. And stay in your post and let, listen to this. If you stay under the flow, it's just stuff falling on you, boy. 
the power source, it just, it just comes in. But once you unplug it and try to plug that, that so there ain't no power in that socket. So God has to fight with us so that we can, listen to this, be consecrated Amen. for his purpose. That's right. Set apart That's right. yeah. <laughs> for the master's use. That's right. <laughs> So I can yes, have no hindrance. The devil, you ain't got no place in me. <laughs> you ain't got no. You ain't got. You can't even talk to my mind while I'm preaching right now. Because I, mean, I ain't been fooling with you. I'm so clear, full and clear about God right now. So we have to to labor, man, to stay in God's presence, Amen. which keeps us out of the presence of Amen. sin and the flesh. Amen. And so, let's get this last passage. I guess we'll get this, Luke 9. Let's go Luke 9. traveling on the road, someone said to him, I will follow you as to wherever you go. And, and Jesus told him that the foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has no place to lay his head. Hmm. And then he said to another, follow me. Lord, he said, first let me go bury my father. But he told him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go spread the news of the kingdom of God. So let's stop for a second. <clears throat> Jesus just, he just confronts two weaknesses that rise up in those he calls to follow him. The first person's weakness, let's see if we can identify this. He said, um, he said I'll follow you wherever you go. <laughs> and Jesus has to let him know, now, do you really know where I'm going? <laughs> Because you can think this is exciting. You can think this is only grandeur and, 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 and excellence and, and first class hotel. <laughs> you can think, because if, if you look at religion, being a, being a servant of God look a certain way that appeals to the flesh. Mm -hmm. It appeals to every worldly desire I already have without God. <laughs> I just can get it, doing it God's way. And that sounds and looks right. Mm -hmm. But Jesus has to recognize, let him recognize, listen, I'm on my way to the cross. Like, if you follow me, you follow me. Listen to this, to bear a cross. I'm calling you to die. Not to have your best life as you can imagine it right now. I am calling you to an extreme, narrow way where you can't take a whole lot of stuff with you. You're going to have to drop some of them ideas, that grandeur and splendor. This is going to be, I ain't got nowhere to lay my head. Right. It's a rough journey. I want you to count the cost before you get started. And to the next person, so the first person he says, it ain't what you think it is. To the next one he says, man, um, become my disciple. Side, so this is what it says in Amplified. Side with my party. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm on a campaign, man. I am the king. I'm coming to let the world know I am side with my party. <laughs> Ride with me on this mission, says Jesus. He said, uh, and accompany me. But he replied, Lord, permit me first to go and bury or await the death of my father. I'll give myself fully to you after that scenario ends. But Jesus said, allow the dead to bury their own dead. Now, that's an exacting moment. It's my father, though, Jesus. He up there in age. I want to see him off. Before I get caught up in on this mission, I don't know where this is going to lead, but I think the most important thing for me right now is to see him off. Mm -hmm. And then I'll come and get to this. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, man, let the dead, the people who, this other people is what mm -hmm. Jesus said, I can do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you got something more important than that. <laughs> you go bear witness to the gospel of the kingdom. So Jesus says to the first man, it's not what you think. And to the second man, it says, listen to this. It's going to cost you more than you can imagine. <laughs> it's going to cost you more than you can imagine that you're going to have to give up some stuff. It is an exacting call and that there is nothing Amen. more important Amen. than the proclamation of the gospel of yes, Christ. Yes, sir. 
I don't care how how near right. and dear. Right. I I Jesus is like I I do have compassion on that, but I gotta let you know that ain't more important than what I'm calling that. <laughs> I recognize death. I looked at my God Lazarus and it wet the tear. Like I, and I had the power. I understand what death does and the human emotion. But listen to this. I'm not going to get caught up in human emotion. There's nothing more important than you fulfilling your assignment, which is to bear witness to the gospel of Christ. And look at how Jesus ends that. Go ahead and finish it, Brother Hash. Verse 61. Another also said, I will follow you, Lord. Uh, but let me first go and say goodbye to those at my house. But Jesus said to him, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. Mm. Man. Jesus said, No one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back to the things that are behind him is fit for the kingdom of God. I mean, that's 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 uh, Lot's wife. Mm -hmm. It's, mm -hmm. man, what am I giving up? Mm -hmm. Leaving all that. I don't know where God's sending this, but my heart is back there. Man, it is to, it is to do what Paul did. Mm -hmm. Man, like, I count that dumb. Mm -hmm. All that prestige, reputation I had, I'd rather be a nobody with Christ than to be somebody without him. He said, man, I count that foolishness for the excellency. So he thought so much of Christ that he, saw, he was able to think little of that. And without the thrill of our soul, without the worship of Christ rising up in us to where Christ is big, he's glorious, he's beautiful, my heart is thrilled by him, I'm gonna settle for lesser things. I'll make unimportant things important. So I, I, I must spend time with him. I must be a worshiper before I can become a good witness. That's right. Because that's what I feel like, man. I feel like God gave me a while back that we are worshiping. Remember, the whole deliverance of his, his people from Israel was so that they could come and worship. Mm -hmm. And that worshiping community was to then go out and be a witness <laughs> to all of the other nations of there's nobody who has a God like our God. <laughs> Y'all heard about what he did in Egypt. <laughs> we his people. Listen, I get the boast. In his work. <laughs> I get to be somebody <laughs> under his banner. I, I'm with him. I love what Jesus said, man. Side with my party. <laughs> get with the winning team, man. Get with the winning team, man. Like that is a blessing to be able to not. Like, cause that's how I was about me. Though I wasn't that. <laughs> I was trying to get people to side with me to think. The same opinion I got about me, I want you to have that opinion. I'm trying to win you over to be convinced that I'm the dude. And now I get to still have that same swagger, but it's about him and he's the dude. I want you to think much of him. I want to use my life, even listen to this, I want to use my weaknesses. I want to use my failures as we just talked, my times when I ran away from him. I ain't talking about before saved, but after I've been saved, after I've been standing up preaching real good, I done went over there and ran after some other stuff. And he came and got me, which tells me, I ain't nobody. But he's right. Right. <laughs> to get to be on the side, the side with his party, man. And to be on the wedding day, what the what? Uh, this is what deliver. He delivered me, said. <laughs> Christ raised and paid. Like we on the wedding team, man. The can lose. And so may God give us the attitude and the conviction that we see was in Jesus, which is I must be about my father's business. Right? Like I must be. Like I want to complete the work that he has given me to do. I want to finish that, man. And as Paul moved in those modes, like, man, time, the clock is ticking, and it might not be ticking on them, per se. They might be here for another 30 years, but I might got two left. What am I going to do with these two? Am I going to go all in, or am I going to tiptoe through the hall? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, boy, you know what? Right. Father, we thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your great love for your people. Thank you for your joy and mission. Thank you for a call that gives us purpose and meaning in life. Thank you for, for your desire to make yourself known, that you would, that you would uh, exalt yourself, that you would set vividly yourself crucified before your people in this world. And that you would call sinners, you would call rebels 
to, to side with your party. And then as they get listed in and they don't have all the qualifications, you qualify. <laughs> you certify them, you await the gifts you've already put in them and you send them. And then that becomes the greatest adventure of their lives. Mm -hmm. To be on a day-to-day -day mission with and for you. We get, we get to go do this with you. We're not just doing it for you. That's right. But we get to go do this with you and experience the hills in the valley. What a thrilling ride. What a joy. This moments of like, I don't know how this thing is working. It ain't working. It ain't, I don't know what's going. It's, it's happening. Man, the Lord, like, this is the seesaw. It's up and down. God, we thank you, man. My life has me. My life could be in the dumps without this aspect of my life. I'm just waking up working and trying to raise a fat. Like, man, I, man, but you've given me something that, that gets me up in the morning. I got a reason to keep me up late at night. It got me working in ways. And that is to my own joy and Amen. comfort. Amen. Thank you, Father. Amen. I give you praise. I give you glory for this night, for these brothers, for this moment, for this social media opportunity to share your word around this world. We give you praise for what you're able to do with it. And we may never find out on this side what you did with this moment we um, had tonight that probably couldn't have been a moment. But you had a space for Yes. You had somebody to say, hey, if you want to preach, <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory for this. It's a gift to us. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.